think we've all dreamt of becoming a Pokemon trainer when we were kids. I mean, leaving home at 10 years old, completely unsupervised by any adult to travel the country on foot, capturing and training wild animals? Pfft. It's a dream come true! And then, some of us got older and became adults, and now we dream of understanding how the hell taxes work! <laughs> Being a Pokemon trainer sounds amazing in theory, but there are certain realities of the world that the games just sort of gloss over. I mean, pfft. What, you think that gym badge is gonna buy your groceries? You think stealing Youngster Joey's lunch money is gonna pay your rent? <laughs> nah, if the experience in the games is anything to go by... Yes, actually, it's fairly easy to get pretty much infinite money as a Pokemon trainer in those games. Uh, but let's be honest here, most people who become Pokemon trainers aren't the protagonist. They're not the champion. They're not taking down criminal organizations single-handedly. They're not exploiting infinite money glitches. Uh, look, as much as you want to be the very best like no one ever was, you're not red, all right? You're a hiker knob standing stock still on Route 25 with a couple of Geodude just trying to get by on your meager prize money and praying that some kid from Pallet Town doesn't come through. Now that sounds like a pretty bleak existence, but perhaps we're underestimating Hiker Knob. I mean, there's a reason he's been standing out there so long, right? Maybe being a Pokemon trainer, even an average one, is way more of a lucrative career than we all thought. There's only one way to find out. Today, I'm breaking down the math and I'm making your dreams a reality. Today, we answer the age old question. How rich is an average Pokemon trainer? Richard, hit that intro. This question is actually way easier to figure out than you might think. It just requires a lot of math. It's pretty well established at this point that the Poke Dollar is roughly equivalent in terms of value to the Japanese yen. We can figure this out by comparing the price of a freshwater in the games to real life Japan, or, you know, you could just play red and blue in the original Japanese, where the currency is literally called yen. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be converting everything into US dollars because that's where I'm from. So to all my British viewers out there, I apologize, but a pound is a measurement of weight. No, no, I don't care. I don't care if you're a simp for the metric system, right? It's not a As a Pokemon trainer, obviously your main source of income will be winning Pokemon battles and taking prize money from the literal child that you just beat. Now, technically speaking, this is actually something you can do in the real world. It's called crime. But I guess in this case, it's like government approved crime. So just cough it up, Joey. Come on, you know you're good for it. In a typical playthrough of the Kanto games, your Pokemon will be around level 50 to 60 by the end of the game. That means that as an average trainer, you'll be around level 25 to 30. In the games, a victory against a trainer of this level gets you 800 to 900 yen, which sounds like a lot, until you realize it's only about $4.72 to $5.40. For simplicity's sake, let's just say that you make an average of five bucks per battle victory. See, Joey, you're fine. Now, at this point, I could just find out how many battles you need to do in order to make a decent living, but there's still one problem. When playing the games, you win like 99 out of 100 battles, no problem. But that's because your character is supposed to be like a Pokemon prodigy. Most people in the world can't command Pokemon as easily as you, and they don't get to see into the matrix and know the exact stats of all their moves. All that is to say, your average trainer's probably gonna lose. A lot. Let's just assume that you are winning 70% of your battles because the American education system fundamentally misunderstands percentages and thinks that's average, which is good enough for me. For every battle you win, you make five bucks. But remember, for every battle you lose, you pay five bucks. Redoing the math, this means that every battle you're making an average of $2, not five. So, at $2 per battle, how many battles do you need to do to make a decent living? Well, just as a baseline, 
in the United States, in order to be considered above the poverty line, you need to make a minimum of $14,580 per year. If you want to follow your dream and become a Pokemon trainer, then it's safe to say you're willing to put in a bit of hustle. So let's assume that you work six days a week and only take one day off. 52 weeks in a year times 6 days a week gets you 312 days worked a year. At $2 per battle, you would need to partake in 24 battles every single day just to make ends meet. That's just one battle an hour, which seems totally doable. Assuming you never sleep again. Capitalism. Alright, I'll admit that's not a great start, but think about it. One of the perks of being a Pokemon trainer is that you can live a very simple lifestyle. Your income might be low, but your expenses are also super low. In the show, we see Ash and the gang constantly camping out. You could cook food for yourself on the road. Healing at Pokemon centers is free. Heck, if you're really smart and just constantly lived out on the road, you could probably bring your expenses down to zero. At that point, you wouldn't even have to bother with battling. You'd basically just be a hermit living out in the woods, which, again, you could totally do in real life if you don't mind, you know, probably dying. No, realistically, even if you're a Pokemon trainer, you're probably going to want a place to live. You need to buy some food and clothes for yourself, items like Pokeballs. And look, healing your Pokemon might be free, but if you live in Unova, at least, healing yourself sure as hell ain't. So, to get a good estimate of what your expenses might be like as a real Pokemon trainer, I looked up the average cost of living in the United States, removed everything that you could get away with not paying for. I mean, we're talking the bare minimum here. And I got a number that's about $500 more than the real world poverty line in the United States. So, you know, that's, uh, it's pretty, this, this country is, uh, it's, it's fun. So, I mean, well, there's your answer right there. If you worked as hard as you possibly could at the expense of your own health and your Pokemon's health, you could maybe, maybe make just barely enough to survive. If you want to live a life with a little bit of comfort or, God forbid, be able to sleep, then it's about time that you give up on your dream and start working behind a desk. But if you've been around the channel long enough, you'll know that I'm not one to give up. I believe that there is a way for you to follow your dream of training Pokemon without sacrificing your basic human needs. I believe, no, 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 I know that there is but one force in this world more powerful than the cold, capitalist machine. Math! Sure, maybe I can't be the strongest trainer in the world, but I can be the smartest. Clearly, the cost-cutting route isn't getting us anywhere, so we need to find a way to make more money. Like, for instance, challenging a gym leader. Based on the show, we know that Ash generally completes a gym a month. A gym battle gets you anywhere from 1,400 to 4,700 Poké Dollars, which is significantly more than a regular trainer. Assuming you never lose a gym, that's an extra 20 bucks in your pocket a month, which brings the daily number of battles down from 24 to 23. Hooray! Look, no matter how you slice it, making a living as a Pokémon trainer is going to involve a lot of hard work. If you're a moron, I don't care what all the old white people say, life has never been about working hard. It's always been about working smart. As I like to say, if you're not being lazy, then you're not doing it right. Sure, you could grind away for hours and hours, putting in the work and getting that bread, battling every hour of every day with no breaks because that is the American way, damn it. Or you could just get yourself an amulet coin. 
The amulet coin doubles all the money you win per battle, meaning that we are getting $10 every time we win, but still only paying five every time we lose. Redoing all the same math from before, we find that now we only need to do nine battles a day, six days a week. Heck, you could probably fit that into an average eight hour workday and still have time to come home and be too tired to do anything meaningful with your free time. Assuming, that is, that your goal is to just barely scrape by and hit that poverty line. No, 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 no. We can do better. What you need to do is grab yourself a Persian with the move Payday, which can earn you extra money equal to five times your level once per battle. Remember, we're looking at an average trainer level of 25 to 30, but you are going to be using Persian every single battle. You're going to be known as the Persian guy. It's your freaking mascot. So it's probably going to be slightly stronger. Let's say around level 35. That means that for every battle you win, you're gaining an extra $1.81 or $2.36 if you have the amulet coin. Now, the law of conservation of mass states that matter cannot be created nor destroyed, meaning that your Persian isn't simply creating this money, it's getting it from somewhere, probably, probably from someone, so uh, but I mean that's not my problem. Doing this strategy would bring the number of battles you would need to do to hit the poverty line down to six, which is totally manageable. If you ditch the stand in one spot and wait for someone to cross your eyeline strat and instead join like a battle club or a gym or something, you could easily make that happen. Heck, you could probably do more than six a day and start creeping above that poverty line. But you're still working six days a week. I mean. Wouldn't it be nice to get that Saturday back if we could? We can do better. The other main way to get money in Pokemon is by selling items. The highest selling items in the game are the relic items from the Abyssal Ruins, uh, but we already said that insurance in Unova is going to cost you an arm and a leg. It's not worth it, trust me. Beyond that, probably the next best reliable source of items to sell is the Sinnoh Underground, where you can find evolution stones that sell for 7 bucks a piece, star pieces that sell for 40, and plates containing the elemental power of Arceus, the god of the Pokemon world itself, that sell for 3 bucks. All in all, that sounds pretty lucrative, uh, but there's a problem. These items are pretty hard to find, and in the time it takes you to find a Firestone, you probably could have won two battles and made even more money. So unless you get super lucky, it's probably not worth it. I mean, maybe if you got like a whole team of ground type Pokemon to help you dig, you could make the process go faster, or like you could have them dig for treasure while you do battles with Persian. You could probably make it viable. It's hard to say. Beyond that, the only other really reliable way to get items to sell is by catching Pokemon who happen to be holding them. A lot of wild Pokemon have a chance of holding like a berry or something like that, and if you catch it, then the item is yours. Of course, then you would need to use a Pokeball to catch the Pokemon, which costs money, so it probably wouldn't be worth it, unless you got yourself the move Thief on your Persian, which would let you take the item without having to catch the Pokemon, and then you could turn around and sell it at a profit. Though I suppose that battling wild Pokemon probably isn't the best idea because you don't get any prize money for winning, so it'd be best if you only stick to doing this in trainer battles. Oh wait, but that, that would require you to steal the item from the trainer, which feels pretty illegal. I mean, like, you know, prize money is one thing, but stealing items is... It's kind of the same thing when you think about it. I mean, like, prize money, prize choice scarf. It's all, it's all the same, really. I, clearly, that item wasn't helping them anyway. I mean, they still lost the battle. They didn't need it. And if Joey has got a problem with it, he's got no Pokemon left that can fight. What is it going to do? Granted, this strategy only works if your opponent gives their Pokemon an item, which not a lot of trainers do. But at this point... Why bother with going through all the effort of getting Thief on your Persian to take the item? Just take the whole Pokemon! I mean, think about it. You KO all their Pokemon, and now the kid's got nothing left to defend himself while you got a big-ass cat and a rhino with a drill. Again, 
What is he going to do to stop you? The Celadon Game Corner sells Pokemon for upwards of 10,000 coins. At 50 coins per 1,000 Poke Dollars, that's 20,000 Poke Dollars or $134.88 per Pokemon. If you take three Pokemon per trainer, forget about the prize money, you're making bank off just that. No, 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 in fact, in fact, let's take that prize money too. Uh, not just the standard 850 Poke Dollars per victory, let's take Youngster Joey for everything he owns. And again, I ask, what is he gonna do to stop ya? Yeah, 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 now we're getting somewhere. Just go to a gym or something, any place with a lot of trainers that are slightly weaker than you, beat them with your overleveled team, take their money, take their Pokemon, sell the items, sell the Pokemon, and suddenly you're not just scraping by, you're rolling in cash. Enough cash to, who knows, you might be able to bring on some extra hands. I mean, think about it. Winning all those battles and stealing all those Pokemon yourself is a lot of work. It might be nice to have a little help, you know, a, a nice team of people to carry out the day-to-day -day operations of the business. You can send those people out to do the grunt work while you focus on the bigger picture of what to do with all this money. Uh, sure, it may not be legal, strictly speaking, but with a team of powerful Pokemon and an army of soldiers at my beck and call, who's gonna stop me? I started as a poor kid on Route 25, just trying to scrape by with my love of Pokemon, but now, I would say the sky's the limit, but truthfully, there is no limit. If you want to reach me, the most powerful trainer in the world, you're gonna need a damn rocket. You, you were too concerned with pursuing your childhood dreams of traveling the world and teaching Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. But me, I'm a realist. You want to be an honest Pokemon trainer for a living? Newsflash, kid, you can't. Pokemon are not whimsical creatures to be befriended. They are important tools for keeping our criminal enterprise going. I am the leader, Giovanni. For your insolence, you will feel a world of pain.